Ladies and gentlemen, let's start. Good afternoon and welcome to uh, Estonian IT College coordinated Erasmus IP programs uh, deploying IT infrastructure solutions presentation day. Little bit about background. It's uh, the aim of a program is to provide for two weeks uh, students opportunities to test their knowledge and skills involving uh, real world assignments. And these assignments were provided by the company Helmes AS, Tallinn University of Technology, and Estonian IT College. Uh, and uh, during these two weeks, uh, four to eight member teams solved these program problems, what were proposed by our previously mentioned companies. And And the students and teachers are from Finland, Greece, and Lithuania, and also are participating Estonian IT College students. So, without further ado, I ask uh, in front of him Mr. T. Trosma, IT College Rector. teams, uh, their supervisors, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as this time especially is showcase for your teams that uh, I would like to say some words for you. Uh, after two weeks of intensive work, you have reached to the stage where now it's time for others to see what you learned during these weeks. I'm sure that certainly it's a very intensive work and tiring, uh, but uh, it gave all players a unique team building and professional experience. I hope that um, real challenges, real tasks and work at the international teams offer you a lot of fun, gives you a lot of friends and new professional experiences. I would like to thank all the supervisors and uh, local organizing team as well. There are teams, 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 sorry. Uh, we look forward to your presentations. Good luck to you. And now the first team, which are, according to our schedule, is e-teacher team. The floor is yours. Good afternoon, everybody. We are TV teacher. The members are Panagiota Hatsi, Niklas Karadimitriou, they are from Greece, and Sander Sarm, and myself, Indra Kmit, from Estonia. Uh, in the next 12 minutes, we're going to present to you our system application e-teacher. Our presentation is uh, divided into four parts. First, I'm going to talk to you briefly about the problem and the proposed solution. Then Sander is going into more detail how the, our application works. After that, Nic Nicolas is going to present to you a little demo. And last but not least, Panagiota is going to conclude our presentation. If there are any if there are any questions, please leave them to the end of the presentation. And now to the problem. Uh, our client, Professor Preet Raspel, uh, is a very busy man because during one semester he has to correct uh, more than 2,000 exercises. 
and uh, today he's doing it uh, on paper, so o old school. He wanted a solution that he can do it, do it all digitally, and he had two requirements. One, that it has to be as fast as uh, on paper, and the other one is that he can use his uh, touchscreen monitor to write comments and so on. And uh, now let me present to you our solution, eTeacher. Uh, from the life for the students gets much easier because they don't have to print their works out anymore and give them to the teacher in person. Uh, they can just uh, upload the files. We chose to use uh, Moodle environment. That's a very popular e-learning environment uh, in Estonia. Almost all the universities are using it, so the students are familiar with that environment. In Moodle, they can just easily upload the file and they have a good overview about uh, the grade, the feedback that the teacher is giving them. And uh, that's the student side. For the teacher, it's even more easier because uh, he has on his own personal computer, he has a special application where, which synchronizes with Moodle. He can see if uh, students have uploaded uh, their exercises. He can easily correct them using the touch screen and uh, give a great feedback and uh, then just submit it and it will be uploaded again into Moodle so that the student can see it. So that's the short overview about eTeacher. Now Sander is going into more detail how it all works. So hello, uh, I'm going to tell you about the Moodle. Uh, at the moment the Moodle is uh, kind of um, uh, the kind of connection between uh, teacher and the students. It's an open source e-learning software platform and uh, the teacher can uh, add grades to students and uh, upload uh, the homeworks, uh, I mean the practices and the lessons and uh, students can upload their homework. Uh, also, Moodle REST is uh, now connected, I mean, Moodle is connected with Moodle REST API, which is a uh, connection between Moodle and uh, the environment, I mean, the application. And um, Moodle REST uses uh, REST protocol to communicate. And uh, at the moment, uh, JSON data structure is chosen for us. So, on this picture, you can see students and the uh, teacher who is very sad because uh, he has so many exercises on paper because uh, there are so many students and all of, the, all of the students have like seven homeworks so they print their exercises out and teacher has to uh, correct those with a pen and it takes, uh, let's say, too much time but uh, our solution should provide the faster <coughs> correction. So uh, students can uh, use uh, web browsers and uh, upload their homework to the Moodle system where the teacher can get them later and uh, correct them. So uh, Nicolas is going to tell you something about this application. Hello. Uh, in order to provide a solution uh, for this problem, we created an easy-to-use application uh, integrating some uh, Moodle, service, uh, Moodle services. It's implemented in Java and processing language. And uh, you're going to ask what's the goal? Well, the main goal of uh, this system is to augment s this uh, Moodle system uh, services and uh, reallocate, relocate the, the whole evaluation system to a digital environment. So, in working on achieving that goal, uh, we created uh, the, the last component of our system is a standalone, uh, local, standalone application in the teacher's uh, computer. And this application tries to facilitate uh, students' exercise evaluations and uh, utilizing touch screen usability, uh, student course management, grading and communicating through, through Moodle. Although it must be said that Moodle is just one service, one uh, environment. It can be done in other e-learning environments, like in our country, e-class. And uh, one main point is that it's said there, one device to rule them all. It's easy for the teacher to uh, organize his work and uh, grade uh, 
papers and exercises through all other universities if he, he teaches to other universities. So let's have a quick demo. I'm just going to use show you a use case, easy. Some of the data is not uh, uh, real because it's 85% finished, ready tomorrow. So we have this up, up here, it's the courses of the teacher. You can see it has two courses. Let's say you can choose um, a student. This evaluation, you can see then an ERD diagram. It's specified for the client. You know, we can go do, go in draw mode and correct maybe this or the title and or maybe we can erase something and um, maybe comment this one this is wrong we can sh hide and show the evaluation to see what we have done and at the end more stuff can be done you can see in the right side we conclude like very nice work and this is specified from our t from our client the grading system we can say like this and submit it and it's automatically uploaded to Moodle with all the comments and the grading so that's the demo and Tula will take the word and speak for the other okay ah sorry this is the, the other way of resolution you can see the teacher now is happy using our sudden land application. Sorry, I'm happy now too. <laughs> so he uses our application, he communicates with Moodle, and this road is totally avoided. So no more piles, no more piles of paper and that stuff. Tula. Hello. As everybody saw in this demo, the solution we proposed uh, makes life much easier for student and for teacher. As for the students, the students just have to log in into Moodle and upload their files into it. Uh, before the system was made, the, stu the students have to deliver their assignments in paper, in person and every week. But now they will do it using our system, our solution. Teacher's life is much easier as well because um, he has only he, he hasn't so he, he doesn't have so much paperwork and he only has an application that synchronizes with Moodle and he has an overview of exercises that are presented he can, he, he can do the evaluation, the correcting, he can comments and he can upload these exercises in Moodle and so the students can see their results into it um, also the grades and the feedback are sent to Moodle and with a few modifications the system can be used for any course that needs uh, evaluating exercises and reestablishing it in digital environments. That's it. Thank you. If you have any questions. to support for these uh, assignments? Uh, right now it supports all image, uh, image files and PDF. Okay. Right now, but it can be used, modifi modified it to use doc, uh, whatever, uh, whatever you like. It's okay. That's not a problem. Thank you. Any other questions? I would like to ask, uh, uh, why did you prefer this uh, Java framework over there, not any kind of web application? Instead of web application? I, I, I saw it, this uh, ain't a web uh, application, it's uh, put in Java, or I did understand wrong. Yes, this implement in Java, Java and processing. Yeah, why didn't you choose any uh, web uh, frameworks for that? Ah, uh, because uh, uh, I'm, uh, we are more familiar with Java pro, uh, language and because in order to do some image processing like we do there, the, the browsers are not that uh, uh, HTML, it's HTML5 it's needed to 
process uh, larger images or do some more uh, technical stuff. So it's not ready for this. I don't think it's ready for this. Or it might be done, but in a harder way. This is uh, easy implemented and it doesn't have any um, how you say, computational any um, restrictions. You can do anything you want. Okay. Any more questions? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, next team, team, please. And also, I forgot to mention that. Uh, we also have a Skype line open, so everybody who's doing television watching or the watching it distant, uh, you can also ask questions to our presenters. Nee, next team will be security team. Floor is yours. Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming here, and it's so nice to see you all here. Uh, we are here to present our results of our subject, uh, security testing of web application. But before that, I want to introduce uh, my, our team for you. My name is Thomas Lepiste, and I'm from Finland. And here is Sandra from Estonia, Juri from Lithuania, Markus from Finland, Kestutis from Lithuania, Matis from Estonia, and Sten from Estonia, and last but not least, Mika from Finland. And since we only have 12 minutes time to do our presentation, uh, we would like to point out that if you have any questions to ask, ask them after the presentation. Now Sandra will continue. Thank you. So, in the course of our presentation, we will be talking about what is the SIS, what we tested, uh, what kind of tools and resources we used, uh, what results we got, and finally, what can be concluded from these test results, and a few suggestions for the future. Now, the SIS, the Security Inf the Study Information <laughs> System, is used by 13 institutions of higher education in Estonia, and it holds the study results and contact data inf contact information for about 17,000 users. Uh, in addition to keeping track of study results, there is also the possibility to upload study material files for teachers, for to submit applications for students, and to send messages through the SIS. The goal of our project was first to learn about the common and critical security threats and then test the SIS against them to see whether we found a vulnerability. So you just don't start with the hacking, first you have to learn. And this is what we have been doing actually, we've been learning. And uh, we have been learning from uh, different uh, tools, uh, uh, methodologies, documents, uh, such as uh, OWASP, OWASP SVS, Kali Linux, Firefox, Temper Data, and our software we also use that, that you can see on the screen. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the findings that we found and the security holes and threats that we found. The first one is uh, there are some developers' notes uh, remaining in SIS. This only occurs in uh, development environment, but it still should not be there. Uh, we found out that um, uh, SIS is vulnerable to beast attack. We didn't have the resources to test it, but it's, uh, it is a possible threat in the future. Uh, we also found out that um, development environment uses a copy of uh, live data and uh, the data should be mixed somehow and uh, even a copy of live data should not be used.
also we found out uh, that uh, uh, there uh, one of the uh, pages that's called uh, uh, schedule uh, uh, had some uh, bugs in the system um, uh, but it has been uh, fixed uh, on the 2nd of a April uh, uh, I'll try to explain a bit about this uh, firstly uh, what we have here uh, the that uh, user uh, actually any user can uh, view this data uh, uh, even uh, the one without uh, authorization uh, what it shouldn't be here is uh, this uh, um, uh, information uh, block that uh, tells the name and the surname of the student and this field that uh, is uh, that the user is able to uh, filter uh, f other uh, students. Uh, it is uh, r uh, this page is reached uh, simply by by uh, uh, typing uh, this ID in this URL, and uh, the student uh, schedule is uh, shown. Uh, also, uh, there there are some. Uh, uh agenda uh, where uh, students uh, uh, where where there is a table where students uh, have to retake some exams or tests uh, and it is also can be accessed by uh, any user uh, so uh, it should it shouldn't be uh, accessible to to any user because uh, it uh, uh, evaluates the data protection laws. Um, furthermore, uh, all students and teachers can upload materials to the study system and uh, they can upload them as study materials or uh, just applications or for stipendiates or something like that uh, but uh, there is no check uh, for the types of file or what's inside the files so this could be a possible vulnerability for uh, cross-site uh, uh, scripting and uh, source-site precursor for forgery and uh, running scripts on the server so hello in addition to that, we found out that uh, changing user data does not require re-authentication. That means that uh, wherever there is, there is displayed a form, there is a security token, which is calculated from specific algorithm. But this token should change upon every login or every time that form is displayed. But we found out that this uh, token remains the same for this specific user. That means that a uh, few more hours and one script and we can sniff this token and change user uh, data and information. And I will show you how easy that would be. Uh, so we have this uh, SIS, which is uh, used right now as a Tux, which is our test user. And uh, if we see I'm sorry, session ended. That happens, which is good. So, I see my settings, I see my information, and as you can see, there are a lot of information about one student. And what are we specif especially looking for is this personal email address. This is used uh, by this system to send you, remind me my password email. So if we can change this email, then we can say that please send me a new password and we can do it even for administrator, for example. So let's say that attacker sends a malicious website to one of uh, these users and this opens a website which says that uh, the user has won one million dollars. And these uh, boxes down there are left only for demo purposes but actually this web page could be totally automatic. So here 
we have this uh, token, which is uh, for Tux. And uh, this is the email what I'm going to use for Tux. So now, if I push this button, it takes me to the SIS. And if I go to see my information now, then my personal email is changed. And now, if I can log out, then I could order myself a new password, just like that. So, continuing. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, what? <laughs> Uh, at this sta stage, I would like to show um, the main points. Uh, we went through the AESVC documentation and we tried to find some uh, SQL and uh, XSS uh, injection vulnerabilities. Uh, we found some security risks and developers uh, should fix these problems. Re-authentication for changing user personal data, form token algorithm, and real data is being used in test environment. And now, uh, our suggestions for future testing are: please continue testing, uh, because uh, with every developer update to modify SIS, there will appear more uh, security risks. Uh, our testing method was uh, black box testing and the next security test should be carried out with white box testing. <coughs> uh, developers have already hotfixed security holes uh, which, have, which we have found, so we can say that uh, SIS is more secure than one year ago, also more secure uh, than a week ago. The more testing done, the more secure it will get. And you can see more information from our wiki. And Team Security would like to thank the developers for cooperation and you, the crowd, for listening. And now we would be very interested to hear your questions and comments. And then we'll answer your questions. Shocked, eh? <laughs> yes. Yeah, <laughs> two questions at once. So, please. Uh, you didn't tell uh, exactly what the beast attack is. A uh, beast attack is uh, beyond our scope because uh, we don't have the resources to do this. We don't have the knowledge. We don't have the hardware and uh, time, but uh, the basic uh, idea of the beast attack is that uh, it is used, it, there are different algorithms and uh, IT College uses RC4 algorithm and RC4 is uh, vulnerable to beast attack, uh, but uh, if we would change the algorithm, if we would secure it a little bit more in different sites, then it, uh, the beast attack problem would be fixed. It, it is very easy to fix it, but it, uh, it is just to mention that this vulnerability exists and it should be uh, fixed because it would be a threat in the future, definitely. Thank you. There was a question? Yes. Thank you. Uh, can you show this uh, slide where you had this uh, results five, I think it was. Yeah, results five. Next. This one? Yeah. There's uh, one good uh, sentence, few more hours and one script. Uh, I wanted to ask you, don't you think that when you get uh, another person token, any system is compromised? So it's uh, not the point how secure this uh, uh, token is, but when you get this token, it's the point to get the token. That's, that is hard. 
Okay. Yes, it is hard to get this token, but if we would get it, then it, uh, all these SIS uh, students would be in threat. But uh, yes, but I think it's in every system. It's like that when you get yes. this token. Yeah, but uh, the basic problem of SIS was that uh, this token does not change. Mm -hmm. But if every time we regenerate this form, or every time we log in or log out, this token should change. Uh, the same way that this user session changes. Because every time we log in, we get the new session, very long number and letters. And every time we generate this form, this token should change the same way that this session ID changes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. If there are no more questions, then security team would like to thank you and have a nice day. Thank you, security team. Next will be sailing. And Skype, please ask questions. Hello everybody, we are the sailing team. Thank you for coming here today. For the next 12 minutes, we are going to talk to you about our project. Uh, uh, we would like to ask you that any questions you have, please ask them after our presentation. Our presentation is going to have three segments, the problem, the solution, and the evaluation of our project. I would like you to introduce to you my team. Uh, this is Christian, Miko, Tommy, Jesse, and Stefanos, and I'm Konstantinos Verigos. Thank you. Hello, my name is Christian Tenisme, and I'm going to talk about our project, our project main problem. Our client is a competitive, uh, Racing Sailor. He needs a system that can assist uh, him with his practice and his race. Uh, for that, he needs wind data with uh, wind speed and uh, wind direction in uh, different points on a map. Also, he needs to see GPS positions on the map. Wind arrow signs are the uh, wind arrow signs. What are appearing on the screen are the GPS positions. For visualizing the data, he needs a simple, efficient user interface uh, with hardware con with hardware controls. Hello, my name is Mikko Heikkuri, and I'm talking about solutions. So, we are creating a system for sailing purpose that consists of three parts. Sensors, Arduino, and tablet. Marine sensors are especially made for sailing purpose to gather information about um, wind speed, wind direction, GPS coordinates, and boat speed. We are forwarding information to Arduin and from there to Android tablet. We have uh, big physical buttons since, uh, to control data since our client doesn't want to interact with a uh, tablet's touchscreen. Hello, my name is Tommy and I'm going to tell you a bit more about our hardware. So we, uh, the whole system is based on uh, Nexus the marine system here, uh, we have three kind of uh, sensors here. 
GPS, speed sensor and a wireless wind sensor. Actually, do we have that one? No. Uh, they're all connected to our Nexus server here. The uh, whole system is uh, using 12 plus minus 12 volts uh, voltage level. So we need to build our own level shifter here. Because uh, our Arduino, Arduino is using uh, 0 to 5 volts. Here is our wind sensor. Uh, here is uh, the hardware buttons, the physical buttons that Mikko told you. Uh, they're connected straight to the I.O. ports here in Arduino. And we need to connect the tablet. We need the Android shield on our Arduino. We're using in this, uh, here we're using USB. Uh, the whole system is using protocol NMEA that is very used with uh, different kind of sensors like GPS, wind sensors, uh, wind sensors uh, speed sensors or something like that. Yes, thanks. Hello, my name is Jesse and I'm going to talk about user interface to Android tablet. First of all, I like to say that client wanted to user interface look like simple and clear. And we think this is the best way to do it. So controlling this user interface, we have three different physical buttons. One is for adding buoys, like this. And one is for adding starting point and final point. And the last one is for adding arrows, which shows wind direction and wind speed. This color here represents wind speed. Here, here right we have dynamic wind speed scale. Here is the minimum wind speed, which is blue one. And here is the maximum red one. On the left corner we have current wind speed. I'm going to tell you about our Android application. Uh, the role of the Android application is very simple. It, ha it uh, handles the connection with the Arduino, gathers all the NMA data we need, it parses the data so we can get uh, the information for the wind speed, wind direction, and GPS location, and uh, visualizes all the data in uh, the UI screen we saw. Greetings, everyone. In this part of the presentation, I'm going to give you an evaluation of our ongoing project, what we did, what we have to do, and what problems we faced. Well, I'm going to divide it in two parts, hardware part and software segment. In first hardware part, everything went OK. We have a functional 100% hardware part with all the devices are working properly. But on the other hand, in the software part, we had a lot of problems, unfortunately. Because in software engineering, nothing works on the first time. We have to test and test and test and test and test a lot of times. We had problem with the Ard Arduino and Android shield. We had an older version. And the library was a newer version. So there was no compatibility between those two parts. Sound? Can you hear me? So there was no compatibility with those parts. And unfortunately, there was no communication. So what we have to do is fix that link between those parts. And that is our point of view. In percentages, I can say that 
we are 100% in finished in hardware part and about 80% finished in the software part. And now, because of Dinos Variegos, we'll tell you some things about conclusion. Uh, thank you all for hearing all about our project. Uh, I, I think we learned a lot about task management, time management, and uh, we learned a lot about, uh, we, we gained a lot of skills for our professional skills. Now we can ask, and uh, we can answer all your questions. Actually, I have my own question. Uh, you said that uh, you're going to use a tablet, but yes. the tablet is very fragile on a C environment. How is it going to do it? To use it on a C, this tablet. Yes, thank you. Well, uh, the client will use a protective case for the tablet to seal it from uh, weather conditions and uh, seawater. That's why he asked for hardware buttons and hardware controls for the interface and for the application. It's working. Uh, there is one question from the Skype, and uh, Antti Virainen is asking that do you have any demo to ready to show us? No, we don't have a, the link between the software and uh, our, the hardware part is broken, so we don't have a demo to show you. Thank you. Thank you. And next will be helmets and driving lesson. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Irena, and we are a driving lessons team. To begin with, I would like to introduce the other team members. So this is Vilus and Alexis from Lithuania, just like me. And next we have Janis from Greece, and also René and Shangwei from Estonia. Like you can see, we have quite an international team here. And also we have a quite interesting Tima to tell you about today. So our Tima is D-Lessons. Uh, we had to create uh, very interesting applications for driving schools. Our creation we called D-Lessons. So today we are going to tell you about the lessons. And after the general overview of the system, uh, we are going to tell you more about each part. It's D-Desktop, D-Mobile and D-Web. This presentation will took us about 20 minutes. So after that, we will welcome any question you have for us. So let's begin. The lessons like I told you already, is system made for driving schools and their students together. This is a tool mainly, mainly made for fun. Uh, in order to make driving ex uh, lessons experience more fun and interesting, but also it can, uh, it can uh, bring the uh, driving schools new possibilities. Because even through the system right now is quite simple and has just one uh, main purpose and does only one stuff, basically showing students and teachers where we were, were in the middle of the driving lesson. We can log in through the web page and see their routes on the map. But in the future, this system can grow into many different things. So it is very promising system. So let me uh, explain it to you. How does the uh, D-Lessons work? 
uh, imagine that this is you. <laughs> Maybe not <laughs> that pretty, but this is you. Uh, then after, when you have a teaching lesson, you go into the driving car where you will have your lesson, and then where will you, the teacher waiting for you with the smartphone who has our application Dmobile. When the lesson starts, he activates uh, the program and the program always constantly asks the satellite uh, to tell him, where am I? So the satellite always sends the GPS data to the mobile phone telling him where you are. And after lesson finished, the, all the data is taken from the mobile phone and it is shown to you in the web, uh, in the map, through the web application. So you can go through all your lessons and see which route you took in the interactive map. Hello, I will talk to you about the desktop program. The desktop program is one of the part of the lesson system. Uh, it helps to register new users. It's also I think uh, this program can uh, grow to the powerful tool which can uh, can uh, mine the data. If uh, no one knows uh, what does it mean, so this means to analyze a data. Hello everyone. Uh, I talk more about the mobile. So the mobile is important part of the lessons. Um, it's application for Android operation system, mostly for mobile devices, smart devices. Uh, the, the mobile basic uh, functionality is record the GPS data from satellites at least one point per second uh, and uh, collect lessons data and, sem and send the data to a server. More about uh, data synchronization with a server. Uh, talks my colleague Janice. Thank you. Uh, as we mentioned before, uh, the mobile device is connected to the to the server via internet. So what happens if uh, the internet connection uh, fails? Do we lose our data? Uh, the lesson? No. We uh, we. Uh, store the data in the mobile device database. We have a local database in our mobile device. So when the internet connection is restored, we synchronize with the database on the server. And that's it. T-Web is, <coughs> T -Web is a simple web server which has two purposes. First is uh, retrieving uh, data from mobile device and saving it into database and uh, a web website a website which displays the road for students and teachers thank you and uh, in the conclusion i shall emphasize that our program provides the client server solution for the driving schools and uh, the users the students can view their review their lessons at home at any place if they have an internet. So the every information we gathered from GPS is connected with the server, so it's not lost. You can review them. This is the main function of our program. So in the future perspective, we think that uh, if uh, this program can be used for the hiking people, you can go to some uh, countryside and uh, use this uh, later you can review it at home. So thank you. This uh, I also want to add some uh, uh, comments to our teamwork. I thank all the Lithuanian partners and also uh, from uh, Grace, uh, colleague, and uh, Rene for this program, uh, for this uh, cooperation. And uh, do you have any questions? We are welcome to answer you. So, please, any questions at all? Uh, I have a 
I have a question that uh, how far did you implement all this uh, T-Mobile and desktop, desktop and all the system? system? Is it like a prototype is working or not yet? Actually, a prototype is almost finished. Uh, as you know, the deadline is only tomorrow, so we are still on time. So the uh, the desktop is working perfectly, and the uh, mobile is also working, and the web is almost finished. Uh, we just are left with a little bit finishing touches to finalize the synchronization. But to until tomorrow, I think we will manage to make uh, our prototype. Yes, please. Uh, there is a question behind you. Hello, I wanted to ask why you had to build three different uh, subsystems for your system and not just a website for everything, for registering users and tracking and all the work. That yes, I understand your question. Uh, actually, we were thinking about two applications in the beginning, uh, but uh, we decided to go with the free one. Why? Because desktop application uh, for this project, uh, for us, was not a mandatory. Our main purpose was uh, catching the GPS data and data about lessons and showing it uh, in the web page. But we were thinking in the future, and if we made the registration, because even if it's not mandatory, registration is necessary for testing and actually showing how it's used, uh, what is working. We have to make at least some kind of registration. And if we implement it into the web page, uh, we were almost certain that that registration form would probably be remade because we don't have that much competence in order to make a very good one. Uh, because here in Estonia, a country of uh, where everyone has their uh, ID cards with the numbers, you can really make one very smart registration form where even uh, Students can register and even order lessons for themselves uh, uh, through the web page. So it would make too much time to change our website. So uh, we created a desktop application who which, easily, which can easily be either removed if necessary or uh, on the contrary, it can be modified into something more amazing like that analysis tool and for example uh, scheduling uh, application for the driving school itself that's why oh yes please uh, i must uh, ask uh, why don't you use any existing solutions to track the GPS path? There are sporting systems for that. Uh, actually, we didn't create it from the scratch. Uh, I think about what kind of solution we used will tell you more about uh, Alexis, please. Um, our uh, one team member, Zua, went uh, to one of uh, driving school so basically I think you want to say that uh, G uh, mostly uh, cars has GPS yes so why we don't use it uh, so Zua went to one of the driving schools uh, he uh, asked about uh, cars uh, has GPS or not so uh, uh, some some cars has GPS we can use the, that data for tracking but some has not so so solution for this is creating simple ab application. Android device is not very expensive. So we think it's best solution for this yes, uh, project. May I make a suggestion which makes this uh, solution even more better? Uh, all new cars have a, a ODB connector which you can get uh, uh, care number, speed, acceleration, torque. If you log that data, then it would be even better to see how good uh, is your gear shifting st strategy and things like that. Uh, actually, uh, I could comment on this question too. Uh, because we, to begin with, we thought about GPS devices in the cars. And we came out with the conclusion that, and our clients also agreed, that GPS through the mobile phone is better. Because even 
if right i uh, i totally agree that gps is in the car have much more possibilities they show speed and even statuses like uh, if the car engine is on off uh, and other stuff because but it's harder to make a synchronization even if we connect the gps uh, with the mobile phone directly uh, uh we for example we could do that but we don't have in this team, a person who knows how to configure the GPS device and make, make that connection possible. And if we just use GPS data uh, and uh, not just, um, to make it sent to the server directly and the connection is lost, the data is stored in the GPS device itself. So it would be problem uh, to then extract the data from the GPS device and put it into the server. And it would not be as fast as possible, which was uh, one of our um, uh, goals. Okay, thank you. We have a question from the client. Oh, yes, please. I have one question to you. Can we see how this application will look like? Oh, uh, we showed you. <laughs> After presentation. <laughs> After presentation. Yes. So we will you show you after So you don't have any demonstration about this application right now? We didn't right uh, prepare it for this computer. It would take too long to show it right now. But we can show you personally after this presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. There is uh, one more question from Skype. Uh, Kaupo asks that uh, what is the real problem that this solution aims to solve? Why track a ride? What is the extra value to a student or the teachers? Oh, uh, extra value, right. Uh, I already mentioned a bit about our problem. Uh, it's to make uh, the driving lesson experience more fun. I think uh, right now st students don't have the possibility to review their routes. Uh, we don't know where they were. For example, if you are just a student, you are way too excited uh, to remember where you went. And I don't know, maybe not all of them would like to have this kind of system and use it, at, at least uh, for now, that it has just one basic, uh, uh, just one basic uh, function and nothing uh, more to, do to that. But for example, I would like to have that kind of feature. I would like to come home and see where I went, which uh, corners I took. Maybe I can go there uh, with my other family members and try again those parts which I was having difficulties with. So this is what uh, this application is for, to help uh, to show students what where they went. And for now, at least, it does just that. But maybe in future, it will do more. For more, for example, teachers could add to the data about lessons the mistakes student made and other stuff. That uh, in that case, student would uh, can look not only on the route but also review the mistakes we made. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. Please. Thank you, Helmes team, and last but not least, the Robotics team. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to this uh, great presentation day, and thank you. So, let me introduce our team, the Robotic uh, Analyzing System team. Uh, myself, uh, I am Yorgos from uh, Creta Technical Institution, Greece, uh, as well Kostas Mikhailidis, and uh, Andreas is coming from uh, Estonian IT College, and our member Veiko, uh, unfortunately, cannot be here with us. So, yes, sorry. Our main goal uh, of this uh, uh, project uh, is about to uh, help our client uh, robotic uh, competition uh, to be more uh, easy and, uh, and fast. Uh, so the main problem is that uh, many countries, many, uh, many robots and many teams 
uh, are take place this competition. So this system uh, provides uh, easy uh, participation uh, registration. Uh, so what we had to do is to build up and create a system that can uh, help the administrate the administration to have a uh, workflow easier and to handle all this uh, system uh, all this competition uh, workflow uh, after this my colleague Costas uh, will give you a more specific uh, about the system we create hello so uh, as you can see here our main task uh, is was to make a complete software analysis for a new system from scratch. Uh, we managed to undertake some UML modeling. Uh, as you can see, use case, class diagrams, and some ER diagrams. Uh, also, we uh, make a software requirement specification documentation. It is in our page in Wiki. You can see it. We have a reference here. It's an IEEE standard, but it was too big to present it. So we have some parts of it in our presentation. Uh, at last, we try to make some prototypes, but our uh, main uh, work was on the analysis. So, as you can see, we try to take advantage of the software analysis literature and we uh, search some forms, some templates to organize our uh, scenarios better. This is an Araujo's form. We have some references from his work in our full documentation on our page on Wiki. And here are some our use cases. We have six, six use cases that we analyze for our scenario. You can see them, a use case, and the scenario is taking place in its use case. Next, we uh, used also some Dennis forms to analyze its use case. This is a more detailed uh, template to uh, have a better uh, organize for our information and scenarios that are taking place in the competition. This is an example of a use case diagram. The specific use case is competition check-in, where at the competition day the, particip the participants arrived. We have Two actors here taking place in this use case, competition administrator and the referee. We have a use case arrival checking, a robot technical check, and a schedule management, which is held by the competition administrator, as you can see, with some other use cases here. Uh, also, we try to figure out some mockups how we imagine the system. You can see here a double elimination tree. This schema there is being uh, uh, pro produced by an HTML file. We didn't uh, undertake to put here some robots, but we have a, a, mo a, a demo to show you by my colleague. Uh, Andreas.
This, uh, this program is uh, written in C-sharp and uh, you can, uh, in this program, uh, you can write how many robots are taking part of competition. Uh, for example, uh, uh, three robots are taking part of competition. We create robots with the button of creating robots and uh, also we generate the graph from the robots. Um, and uh, uh, in uh, in uh, in the winners, uh, w <coughs> we can uh, if the robot wins, we just double click on the robot; it goes up, uh, and if uh, and that's it. <coughs> okay. Uh, Summarization. Uh, uh, to summarize our project, it can be said that uh, during these two weeks, uh, our team tried to make as deep analyze as possible, so the developing of the program uh, can be much easier. Um, we can also make a prototype. Uh, and uh, this is the proof of the concept uh, that this program really works uh, well. Uh, thank you for your attention. Do you have questions? Any question? Question, but what happens if a uh, robot match uh, ends with a tie? Can you repeat it, please? What happens if a uh, robot have a ma match and it ends with a tie? So one one time wins one robot, uh, second time wins uh, other robot. What's you going to do when it's double click, third click, or what's going to happen? Uh, yes, you are right, but I understand your point of view. But uh, we don't uh, manage our time to make. Uh, an implementation of our system. The requirements from the from our car line was to make a software analysis and we don't have time. Maybe tomorrow we can have a more uh, complete implementation. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I have the same question I ask other dream why d why did you do this as a desktop application not a web application Do you mean about our implementation yeah prototype the prototype yes uh because uh, we were more familiar with uh, those desktop uh, languages that's because and we don't the, uh, the prototype was a bonus from our client so we focused more f on the analysis part. But what do you think in the future? Would it be better to make it as a web application yes, or yes. not? Yes, I think that uh, this is the point. It should be a, a website with uh, those several uh, functions integrated in and uh, to the better, for the better uh, competition scheduling. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Oh. I would like. I would like to ask, uh, what did you learn uh, during this week? What did we learn? Hmm. <laughs> nice question. We can say that we were a bit familiar with those uh, analyses before and uh, we can say that the collaboration with other people who don't know each other was the, the more in, uh, <laughs> important. <laughs> okay.
ओके थैंक यू Thank you robotics team and this will conclude our public presentation part thank you everybody who were here thank you online viewers and very 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 many many thanks for the teams just to doing what you did you did good thank you